Okay, this might take a little bit, so just want to slowly but surely go over everything I found on spinner selective catalyst reduction systems with the uh, diesel particulate filter. This this system's kind of confusing on this uh, vehicle, and there's not a whole lot of information out there, even from Mercedes-Benz. So I'm going to share what I found and how I went through and. Uh, got all this information and what you should be looking for uh, to, to diagnose your issues. Um, this sprinter, uh, it's not this sprinter, but another sprinter we had came in with a check engine light on and the code that was stored in the engine control unit or the CDI control unit was 111800, which basically is a very generic and uh, fault code. This component SCR has a plausibility error. So, it sees that there's an issue with the system, but it cannot pinpoint as far as the cause. So these are the test steps. Um, the Mercedes wants you to go through to ch check. They say they want to check the temperature sensor, the upstream uh, catalytic converter. Um, a lot of that is just making sure that the it's reading, period. Uh, when we first got this, we actually finished this test step. Everything looked pretty normal. Um, didn't see anything that was way out of spec. Usually when you see something that's out of range, it'll be marked out in black. So you can see, obviously this engine's not running right now, but it wants a certain value um, to be with, for it to be within. Um, this stuff is actually, um, looks pretty good, or looked pretty good on the other, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got a lot of feedback from the radios here. Um, looked pretty good, tested it, no issues that have found with it, this one temperature sensor. So we went through our next test steps, uh, testing the NOx sensors. The one thing about these NOx sensors uh, is the front and the rear. There's one uh, in front of the uh, SCR system that's measuring the NOx coming out of the diesel particulate filter. Um, and there's also one after the SCR system or that, the, that catalyst, there's actually two in line uh, to measure how well the cats are working with the AdBlue setup. Um, so when you test these things, it's basically, they're just gonna want you to check to make sure that you got power and ground going to it and that the CAN communication going to uh, the network is working. This, these can, uh, NOx sensors are actually a, a considered a control unit. Um, they're almost, they're, they're one piece. So they're um, the, the same uh, left and uh, front and rear can be swapped. Um, it, it seems like it's uh, the only reason why I can tell the difference is because of the locator pin. Uh, there's a five pin uh, module and only four pins. So depending on which uh, side of that pin it's on, it'll kind of uh, determine whether it's a front and rear. So, tested this stuff, no real, um, uh, as far as standout-ish things failing. We tested front and rear, all that stuff was good. And the next thing they want you to test is the SCR system, function chain. So this is basically what they want to make sure that you have um, definitely a quantity. If your ad blue tank is full, these level sensors do have issues where they read incorrectly. Uh, but they are pretty, pretty well, um, sensitive as far as having issues they will set a fault that you can then chase um, so we went through all these tests um, the next test that we actually did uh, which is actually pretty cool is check the ad blue metering amount what it actually wants you to do is pull the dosing valve that's in the exhaust remove it out of the area and put it it's actually it's it's on the other side of the, uh, the exhaust system, but you'll see it looks like a big giant honking injector It's held in by a v-band clamp So they want you to remove it and Then use some kind of measuring device to capture the fluid It then will charge the system up with pressure and uh, Pulse the dosing valve And what you're supposed to do is after you're done is to measure the quantity um, it's not in milliliters or ounces, it's actually grams or measuring the weight of it. So we actually had to purchase a scale. Um, obviously this is just like a cooking scale. 
So you have a, a fluid container that you can zero it out to like we did with this one. And this is actually the quantity that we collected out of that particular Sprinter van. And you see there's 16 grams. What they want to see is about 15 grams um, as far as um, after the test has been completed, the amount of volume that's, that's come through that. So our, our particular Sprinter passed. The only thing we did notice is when we pulled the dosing valve out, there was a high amount of buildup on the injector inside the uh, exhaust where it went around. The, the way these things work is after it shuts off, it'll try to bleed off all the pressure through a returning valve back into the, the SCR tank. And then at that point, it'll open up the injector to, to bleed off any excess pressure. And what I think is causing the buildup is the fact that it's dribbling out, engine's off, it's not able to burn it back off, so it then will collect, as if you know anything about AdBlue systems, or this urea fluid, it tends to build up like crystals. So clean it out, check the system, new issues found. Um, one thing about these systems is they take a long time to set a fault. So if you clear the fault out of there, you could put 50 miles on this thing and you won't have any issues. It's, it's almost like the, the 100 mile threshold is what they're, they're using to kind of test. So we reset the adaptations. I want to show you something. So if you're going to replace a component, let's see here. I think it's in... Okay, initialization after component replacement. This is great. Every time you replace a component, they want you to readapt it to the car, right? Um, on the NOx sensors, they actually want you to SCN code it to the car, which is pretty crazy, but um, they're requiring you to do that. Uh, so one thing you can do is because, let me go back in here. The way the system's actually functioning and checking this stuff is off the NOx sensors. So I want to show you a normal operating value. Start the car. As you can see, uh, parts per million. Um, this obviously is warm engines, 86 degrees centigrade. Let me start it and show you what's going on. crash course and all this stuff so bear with me when you start this car or the this van up initially when it's cold these two values will almost be a fixed value at like 1100 parts per million 1200 parts per million and as a technician you're reading that and automatically throws up a red flag that there's something wrong with the system what you got to understand is that these sensors need to warm up before they read accurately so there's no way that you would have 1,100, 1,200 parts per million. Uh, even with the engine off key on, they'll read that. So disregard that. Don't let that you know, make you go down a rabbit hole as far as your diagnostics is concerned. You want to make sure that you drive this thing, get it warmed up before you start looking at these values as being correct. So almost kind of like an O2 sensor when you first start up, it's at a fixed value like uh, 0.45 or 445 volts until it goes in a closed loop. Same principles, different sensor. Um, one thing we notice is there's no set value as far as what you can go off of, what's normal, what's not normal. One thing I notice is when we first got into the, the, the van and actually driving it around, put the laptop in the passenger seat, kind of watched it, I was going through. These values, just normal street driving, were varying greatly. It'd go from anywhere from you know, the front upstream one, right around 200 to 1500 and back down and 700. And there was no rhyme or reason as far as how these things worked and uh, what was normal. So what I I'm asking you to do is it, because this system is heavily dependent on the knock sensors as far as being able to, to test the system. What you want to do is back out of this thing Go back into your control unit adaptations. Go into initialize after replacement. 
you're gonna find the knock sensors. These are all obviously a list of things that you can, uh, you're gonna have to reinitialize after replacement. The one thing about this is it's gonna ask, let's see here, let me turn off the ignition so I can physically show you what it's gonna ask you to do. The first step it's gonna do is it's gonna reset the adaptation, okay? That is a feature that you're not gonna find in the controlling adaptations for adaptation reset, like most vehicles. That is not there. And so basically the next step, test step it wants you to do is obviously SE encode it if you replaced it, but we didn't replace it. This is just a test step that you're gonna to wanna to take. After you reset your adaptations, you want to do it for the front and the rear knock sensors. Then to be able to test it to make sure if it's working or if these sensors are working correctly, if you reset the adaptations, they're, they're going to have to learn to themselves. This is the, the trick here. Um, after we reset the adaptations and drove this thing 100 miles, it then set another fault, which was not there previously. Um, it set a um, mixture adaptation fault between the front and the rear. Um, so it saw that its range for it, it being zeroed out, obviously this is done during the freeway, I couldn't tell you when or where, um, but obviously it's going to zero itself out between the front and the rear, and if there's a, a big variation it's going to set an adaptation fault. If you receive an adaptation fault, more than likely you are wrestling bad knock sensors. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is, is the knock sensors, um, obviously when they first came out with this engine, the 642 diesel engine, they went through a batch of learning, I guess, a giant learning curve as far as what was considered a good sensor that could last in these things. So that from what I saw in the parts fishes, there was about five different superseded parts that they updated. Um, that in itself speaks volumes for the way Mercedes has been trying to get this under control. So, after that, we, we went ahead and put knock sensor in this thing, and the whole reason why this Sprinter came to us in the first place was actually for uh, smog. I live in California here, so smog is a huge deal. Um, let me go ahead and start this thing again. One thing I did notice, after we uh, went ahead and replaced the knock sensors, I kind of have a baseline as far as what should look normal. These things usually light cruising speeds, no heavy loads or anything like that. They were hovering around between 200 on the top one to 300. And then the bottom one was in within 60 parts per million to 100 parts per million uh, negative from that, so less than. Um, as we climb a hill or anything like that, medium hill, um, obviously maybe three quarter throttle to half throttle, somewhere around there, uh, these values would actually increase. You'd see on the top value right around five to 600 parts per million, obviously you'd see the, the bottom value behind that. Um, and it, it would stay relatively around the 250 range. Uh, 250, 300, you actually start seeing that system work. And not until heavy, heavy load, long, uh, heavy grades would you see these values go over a thousand. Um, but obviously it was almost like a momentary thing. It would stay there for a second, uh, then when it would get it under control either through um, injection timing, um, things like that, uh, to be able to, to bring the parts per million down. Obviously the SER system is hard to gauge when it's actually working. Um, obviously the only thing that I can see is that the, the, the rear sensor, the downstream sensor was less than the front. So something that had to have been working at that point. Uh, so back to the fact that we had to smog this thing, um, setting monitors, near impossible. We actually logged 700 miles on this uh, Sprinter van trying to get the monitors to set. Two that weren't setting, 
diesel particulate filter, SCR system. Uh, one thing I want you guys to test, one, and another thing I actually learned, was that the NOx sensors, when you replace them, guess what? They use another sensor to back them up. And if you remember in the first screen, when you have an SCR function chain, they're looking at exhaust temperature sensors. So for it, basically, obviously you're replacing two at a time, it's gonna need something else to kind of back it up. The way it backs itself up, temperature sensors, you want to do a test. Let's see here if I can find it for you. Okay, it should be right here. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna operate the, the vehicle and watch and monitor the front exhaust temperature sensor, which is right behind the turbo. Um, and the other two is one's in that diesel particulate filter and right after the diesel particulate filter. So these actually look pretty uniform. What it's looking for is obviously you're gonna be the hottest right now and right near the turbocharger. Then behind there, without any intervention, uh, the diesel particulate filter should relatively be pretty close to the one behind it, downstream of it. Um, these are normal values. You do this test and it looks pretty wacky, like your rear sensors are reading higher than your front ones. Obviously you have a temperature sensor issue. So that was our issue as far as getting this thing to pass its monitor test. And, uh, reset its own adaptation or get get into a home position where it was comfortable with. So that's basically the whole system in a nutshell as far as how to test it, what you should look for, um, what's normal, what's not normal, and uh, yeah, just uh, one thing about these sprinter vans, like I said, they're very generic, very limited information as far as test steps go, as far as values go. Even the factory, log in to the factory Sprinter Tech Info, they are limited as far as what they'll give you. Um, you have just as much information if you own a Star Tester. Uh, all your guided troubleshooting um, test steps are built into this thing, so there's no need to actually look on the website or pay a subscription to figure out uh, to see if there's any more information available. So. I know this video was long, but there's uh, obviously I've spent weeks on this thing to get it figured out. So 20 minutes is actually a fraction of the time I spent diagnosing, figuring this out, and um, finding good known values for everybody to kind of go off of. Uh, so that's about it. Everything's worked great. No check engine light, car pass smog, all monitor set. Uh, but it's just uh, it's a love-hate relationship with these sprinters, as most people know. So we're uh, getting everything dialed in so you guys don't have to. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks guys, hope this helps.